Father God, we invite you into the service today. We ask you to transform us as you transformed your servant Peter back in the New Testament. Lord, do a new thing in us. Help us to be the spirit that beings you've called us to be and to leave our fleshly ways behind. And we say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory of heaven. Amen. Jesus came into this world so that we could be forgiven for our sins. Let us confess them now freely. All together. Father, we confess our sins this morning. Our sin of being selfish and self-centered. Our sin of not living up to the high quality in Christ Jesus. Lord, help us to turn our lives over to you right now. To devote more and more of our energy to spreading your love and your word throughout the universe. God knows our hearts and our spirits. God sees our struggles and forgives our weaknesses. Know that it is in God's healing love that you live and move and have your being. Rejoice, for God is with you always. It's supposed to be a joyful giver. It's supposed to be the most exciting thing. Knowing, you know, that we give money and some of us even give it And people might get less, you know, that's uh, that's exciting stuff. All right. Giving honor to God who is ahead of my life. All of you who came out here and work with the Lord today. Lord, we ask you to bless this sermon. And pour down your wisdom in heaven. Remove everything that is in Daniel. And let your spirit shine through. Bless the wisdom here. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I'm going to talk about the Apostle Peter's transformation. And how that transformation is echoed in our own lives as we move from ordinary human beings to the spirit-led beings we can be with the whole help of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. How we can go about the process of sanctification, the never-ending lifelong process of becoming more like Christ. In the scripture we just read, which by the way comes from the UCC lectionary, Jesus asked his disciples who people say he is. When Peter correctly answers that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus tells him he is blessed because this was where the revelation was coming from the Holy Spirit. Jesus goes on to speak words of life into Peter, telling him that his confession of faith, the confession that Jesus is the Son of God, the confession we all as saved Christians will make, will become the foundation upon which Jesus will build his church. Peter is a fascinating character in the Bible. And he is credited with giving the first recorded sermon in the history of the church. This occurred in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 souls were saved, after which Peter becomes one of the main leaders of the early church, where he is shown to be a man full of faith. That said, Peter was not always so holy. In fact, in the four Gospels which portray Jesus' ministry, Peter was more well known for his impetuous nature and for putting his foot in his mouth. Let's look at a couple of examples of this. For while you and I might put our feet in our mouth sometimes, at the time I said I was 13 when I had sand and I had 43, Peter's mistakes are recorded in the Holy Bible for all of us to get a kick out of even 2,000 years later. Imagine that. There was, for instance, the time Jesus told his followers what was going to happen to him at the end of his time on earth. That he was going to be persecuted, put on trial, and hung on a cross. The very mission he had come down from heaven for, only to have Peter tell him that this wasn't going to happen. 
As Matthew 16, 21 through 33 states, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day, be raised, and, uh, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then there was the time Jesus washed the disciples' feet as an example of humility for them to follow after he was gone. Again, Peter protested. Thou shalt never wash my feet. Peter exclaimed, to which Jesus replied that if Peter didn't let him do this, he would have no part with him. So what do you think impetuous Peter said in response? Not my feet only, but my hands and my head as well. Then there's the time Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration in the 17th chapter of Matthew, where Jesus has revealed that all of his spiritual splendor. When the spirits of Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus and the three disciples he brought with him, the scripture reads as follows. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, the beloved, with, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Peter's suggestion to make three tents for Moses, Elijah, and Jesus suggests that Peter is considering them as equals. Hence God's voice interrupting Peter, saying, This is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Peter, like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, will have his moment of glory on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit will fill him and allow him to shine as well. A moment that will change the way he and the rest of the Church of Christ lives forever. But this won't happen before the agony of letting Jesus down in the worst possible way. Like the Apostle Paul who went from being a persecutor of the Church to its greatest proponent, writing half of the letters in the New Testament after an encounter with Jesus, Peter went from being sometimes foolish and to becoming a great leader of the early church after his encounter with Jesus' Holy Spirit. For much to his shame, roughly 50 days before Pentecost, Peter will deny that he knows Jesus three times after Jesus is carried off to the crucified. And yet that same Peter will be forgiven by Christ for this denial. Jesus had a special relationship with Peter. At the end of the Gospel of John, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loves him, using a different Greek word for love each time. When Peter says that he does love him, Jesus tells him to feed his sheep. As we just alluded to, Peter's transformation becomes complete in the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, when he preaches the first recorded sermon and 3,000 souls are saved. This echoes our transformation from ordinary sinning human beings into saved believers. For it was on this day of Pentecost that the Spirit came down upon the disciples. And it was this day that the church began. It was on this day that Peter became the holy man of God he was always meant to be. This is mirrored by the transformation that takes place when you and I, the individual believers in Christ, accept Him as Lord and Savior. For it is on that day that the Holy Spirit takes residence in our bodies. It is on that day that we begin our transformation from sinner to 
the same. While some people will tell you this transformation takes place the second you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, it is far more complex than that. But while the Bible assures us that the Holy Spirit enters us when we profess Christ as Lord and Savior, we may not feel the Holy Spirit at that moment. This filling of the Holy Spirit may take place later and may be repeated many times. But the process of transformation, also known as sanctification, takes a lifetime. The late great African American poet Maya Angelou would respond to people who introduced themselves as Christians with the comment, Already? That is, she was pointing out that all of us are constantly growing in Christ and that none have arrived just yet. Can I get an amen, Jim? Amen. Jesus says, we who believe in Jesus will do greater things than he himself. Let's look at the Bible and see verses 12 through 14 of the 14th Gospel of John. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. How can this be, you ask? Well, I'm about to tell you. That's my job, after all. The mystery as to how we can do greater things than Christ is solved by the fact that today there are approximately 2.6 billion Christians worldwide. And while none of us is perfectly sanctified, We've all become a process, which means that we all, occasionally at least, will allow Christ to work through us with the help of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Thus, there are now over two and a half billion Christians, whereas when Jesus walked the earth prior to sending down his Holy Spirit, there was only one, the God-man Jesus Christ. Can I get my second amen? Last week we began the conversation about transformation as we discussed the tension between our human selves and our godly selves. As we win the battle of our minds, wrestling to overcome our sinful nature that is self-focused and become God-focused and other-focused, we develop mental habits that give us positive energy. Positive energy we can then emanate to the world as we channel the Holy Spirit's energy. This is done by learning to accept negative events and being thankful for our blessings. As we become more and more sanctified, we spend more time in Christ mode. This not only means that we are filled with the Spirit more frequently for longer periods of time, but that we are Christ-minded when we are not in that special state. That is, we are like Christ looking to do God's will and to love and help our fellow Christians develop their Christianity, to edify the saints, and to love and help non-believers to come to know God and to accept His Son as Lord and Savior. That we who have the Spirit of Christ Jesus within will become not only servants of the Lord Jesus, but His brothers and sisters as well. In Matthew 12, verses 48 through 50, Jesus explains this relationship this way. Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Church, it is deeply humbling, is it not? to think that we can be the brothers and sisters of Christ. As we leave the sanctuary today, let us do so with a mind to be Christ as often as we can, to be filled with the Spirit, to be Christ's hands and feet in this world, and more than that, to be Jesus' 
mouthpiece as well. Let us channel Jesus in our actions this week and spread the word throughout Burlington and wherever we may go that we found a friend in Jesus. That he will never leave or forsake anyone who comes to him and that he will give them eternal life. Let us not only invite folks to our church, but witness to them as well. When you see someone who's down and out, let them know that Jesus is there for them as he has been there for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Can I get my final amen? Amen. Right now, there might be one who does not know Christ, or one who feels they have backslidden and want to reestablish their relationship with God. If that's you, I want you to know that Jesus is waiting, that God loves you. If you feel called to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, just repeat after me. Lord, I am a sinner in need of salvation. I turn my life over to you. I believe you are the Son of God, and that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you were raised again on the third day, conquering death and hell. And if that was you and you're here in the sanctuary, I ask you to speak with me after service. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you once again. We ask you, Lord, to help us be transformed into the holy men of God, the holy women of God, that you want us to become. We ask you, Lord, to sanctify us, Lord. Yes, Lord, to fill us with your spirit and help us, Lord, to share our, your light in a dark and dreary world. Too many people are suffering because they don't know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Water's warm at Jaws Pond, and we're stocked full of treasures. Big or small, we buy it all. We buy and sell fast rides, power tools, vintage guitars, and so much more. Walk the plank in style with our fine jewelry, diamonds, and watches. Plus, we have a huge selection of the latest video games, including the new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Jaws Pond, conveniently located on Meriden Waterbury Turnpike in Southington and West Main Street in New Britain. I'm your host, Kurt Barwis. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Andrew Lynn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden. Decision for ourselves for this week, if we want to be made well. Hi, welcome to the crack of dawn. It's Dawn Lombardi. I'm starting the painting. It's going to be the clips with some water. Love it. He took me on the sets of Lost in Space, Batman. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time.